All right, so, uh, uh, so the story started uh, a few, well, something like two years ago, uh, when there was a workshop at the Curie Hospital, uh, which I went to, and uh, the guy organizing the workshop, very sad, uh, started, and so the workshop was in, uh, on uh, uterus cancer, and he started his talk by uh, uh, saying two things. One thing is that one woman out of three has the papillomavirus, and papillomavirus is known uh, to be uh, responsible for this kind of cancer. Even though uh, maybe one woman out of 100,000 will eventually develop a tumor, so it, which means that uh, uh, women can very well leave uh, the whole lifespan without any problem, even though she will have that, that virus. And the, uh, uh, what biologists say, or doctors say, that this virus may stay dormant for a lifespan, and for some odd reason, will all of a sudden decide to wake up, and, and the bingo and goes bad. And, and somehow for physicists, it's not really satisfactory in the outcome of the, I mean, we might imagine scenarios where viruses could you know, stay dormant and then wake up, but, but uh, not really satisfactory in a sense. And then the second thing he said is that one of the person of the uh, tumors would show up at the interface between two epithelia. So the two things put together for physicists it rings, right away rings a bell. Because you know if you look at uh, uh, the way uh, bubbles uh, <coughs> nucleate on the gla in a glass of champagne or in a glass of beer, or if you look at uh, how vortices uh, uh, nucleate uh, in superfluid helium, and it's a wide class, and so they always uh, uh, nucleate much more easily at interfaces than uh, in the bulk. I mean, heterogeneous nucleation by law, very large, is much, much easier, orders of magnitude easier than homogeneous nucleation. So immediately I had this idea that maybe it has something to do with the nucleation process. And uh, 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 Jean-François Joanny, uh, with whom I'm uh, doing most of my work, uh, 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 attended also the workshop, and then we started to talk together, and decided maybe it's time to, uh, to, to work in that, try to do something in that field. And uh, we went, uh, uh, went to, to Xavier, and I gave him a tutorial about nucleation processes. And he kind of liked the ideas, so not for that problem. Actually, he was not convinced for that problem, but uh, for some other reason that, for statistics they had at the curious people, uh, he thought it might be relevant. And, and then uh, for more than a year, he gave us courses on, uh, on tumors growth. And, and, and so I did also with the book and so on. And uh, so what I'm going to talk about today is uh, uh, part of uh, uh, Marcus Bazan thesis. And I'll show you some uh, simulation done by the Jens And uh, uh, I'll say a few words about something we are starting uh, with Jonas uh, Hunt. And uh, Tom has been helping us in all the uh, aspects of the work. And I'll show you if I'm not too uh, slow. I'll show you some experimental results that they've started to have with Fabian. So these are very preliminary results that Fabian is getting uh, uh, in collaboration with Daniel Amintiewicz and, uh, uh, and, and Giovanni Campello. So uh, now upon uh, uh, reading and, 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 and uh, uh, learning, we bump. Uh, into also uh, something which is called metastatic inefficiency, which we thought might have some relevance, and I'll come back uh, on that. Uh, people know very well how to invade, let's say, the liver of a mouse or the lung of a mouse, in that case it's a lung, uh, by 100,000 cells or so, and look at the outcome of uh, uh, the, the cells. And uh, it turns out if you get follow the statistics, and the, uh, the cells may, du may duplicate, uh, uh, start having aggregates which grow, but eventually they may shrink back and disappear, and only one out of 1,000 cells will eventually succeed in, in, in making a tumor. So uh, uh, metastatic processes are very inefficient, fortunately for us. 
But, uh, and, and so, and this statistic also uh, uh, gives us some more uh, uh, argument or some more uh, incentive to uh, uh, try to do something in that field. And let's start with the Gaudi-Duncan experiment. So suppose we are able to make a chamber, and this chamber has a, 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 a walls which are perfectly permeable to nutrients, growth factors, but are uh, rigidly solid. And uh, uh, we close the chamber on the one side uh, by a piston, and this piston is connected to spring. And we see the chamber, well, the duplicating cells, and we wait. So after some time, the cells, I mean, the cells keep up, well, start to duplicate, and at some time they start to push on the piston, and they push more and more, and at some stage, the piston will stop. And it will stop, and that will define the force. By the compression of the spring will define the force. And uh, uh, dividing by the mean area, it will define a pressure, some kind of pressure, but it's not hydrostatic pressure because the fluid can flow uh, freely through the walls. So it looks more like a, 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 a osmotic pressure, but it's not an osmotic pressure. I'm sorry, yeah, it's, it's just jet time. Uh, it's, it's not an osmotic pressure either, uh, because the, uh, the um, uh, ions can flow and so on. So it's a mechanical pressure uh, connected to the tissue itself, for instance. And, and uh, why is it pressure? So it, and uh, we call that homeostatic pressure or steady state pressure, if you prefer. And why is that uh, uh, concept important? And it's something which could have been introduced years and years ago, and somehow I we didn't see it. Uh, it could be done in two dimensions as well, but let's keep that. Let's, let's also look at uh, uh, just orders of magnitude. From all the work we've done in, in cells, and, and, and which have been done uh, by others and so on, uh, uh, it's, uh, we know that cells can develop effective pressures either from the motor activity or from the uh, polymerization, depolymerization of acting the type of activity of the order of 1,000 pascal, 10,000 pascal. So, so uh, uh, we expect these uh, uh, cellular pressure to be of the same order of magnitude. We might be wrong by, I don't know. But it's just, you know, a naive expectation, they say. And uh, if we were to do that in 2D, for, so for 2D epithelia, it would give uh, uh, two-dimensional pressures, which would be in the same uh, bulk part as the pin. So they would be also measurable. Okay, so back to the, why is it an important uh, uh, concept? Is that, uh, uh, suppose now that uh, uh, we, we take two chambers, and a, a, a mobile piston here, and this piston does not allow for, first we assume that the piston does not allow for biochemical torque between the two tissues. And so it's only mechanical uh, uh, interaction that we are to discuss. And let's say the uh, tissue in the right part here has a lower steady state pressure than the tissue in the left part. And we let the, uh, the tissue duplicate. And uh, so, at some point, so the pressure grows, uh, grows, and at some point, pressure in the right compartment will reach the steady state value of the right tissue here, which means that the number of apoptosis and number of duplication are equal. And But this guy has a pressure which is lower than his own steady state pressure, so it keeps on dividing. So the pressure raise. And now the number of death of the cells is larger than the average number of the uh, duplication. So this piston moves to the right. But this guy still has a pressure which is lower than its steady state pressure. So the piston keeps on moving. And there's nothing preventing this uh, tissue to totally invade that tissue. And there is no compromise. So the, the one tissue which is a larger uh, steady state pressure will always, under those conditions, will so for if there is no signaling, what, and if the uh, biochemical condition are the same for the two tissues, then there will be no compromise between the two tissues, and, and this tissue will always wipe out this tissue. And so, uh, uh, this mechanical uh, uh, unbalance, I think, is really crucial to understanding the question of uh, uh, tumor growth. 
So now for, for what? Let's allow for some pain of signaling for, for a few seconds. And uh, uh, suppose that the, let's just call the uh, tissue, which is the lower uh, steady state pressure, the healthy tissue, and suppose the healthy tissue is able to send a signal in the uh, uh, cancer tissue, let's say, uh, here, which locally decreases the steady state pressure of, uh, uh, of this uh, cancer tissue. So now you see that if, uh, if this compartment is very big, and the, uh, the signal here will never propagate any further than a few cell uh, uh, diameters. So if the, if the chamber is really big, everything uh, uh, will happen as if there was no signaling. And so this uh, 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 tissue will wipe out this tissue. In the inverse, if yeah, the chamber is very small, and if it's small enough that you only have the, uh, the part which is influenced by the healthy tissue, now uh, the, uh, uh, the effective uh, uh, steady state pressure will be smaller than this one, and now the healthy tissue will totally wipe out the cancer tissue. So you start to see that there is a length scale at which, and then there will be an unstable uh, steady state where the, uh, the size is such that these two guys balance. So uh, uh, the space average of uh, duplication and uh, uh, death, so death uh, is balanced, but it's an unstable, as you, can, as you can see from this argument, it's an unstable steady state. So you can start to see that there are uh, mechanisms which could, would give you unstable uh, 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 steady state and, and a critical uh, uh, length scale to exceed if you want uh, a successful growth. It turns out this is not uh, uh, a scenario that you see in nature for a very simple reason. Uh, cancer is an evolutive disease. And those mutations which are successful are those mutations which take advantage of the uh, surrounding world. So those mutations which would uh, uh, not take advantage of the healthy tissue are not successful. It's not to mean that it does not exist, but this will die out automatically, basically. So it's not, if you read the books, and it's never, I mean, they, they tell you that the, in fact, the cancer tissue take, uh, uh, picks the uh, growth, uh, the factors from the normal tissue. So this is exactly the control which is occurring. So there's no leg scale there. Okay. Uh, now, do you want to describe uh, uh, the, uh, if you want to describe the growth process, of course, there, there, are, there, there are source terms, for duplication and that, but also you want to describe the, the tissue uh, as some, I mean, you know, maybe a foam, maybe a solid, maybe a liquid. And in fact, there is a, an extensive literature uh, dating back from a very early, I think, which I learned, uh, showing that it, for most tissues, not maybe, you know, maybe not for all tissue, but, to, but for most tissues, they behave like liquids on time scale of hours. So even on time scales shorter than the duplication and, and, and death rate, uh, tissues be like tissues mostly, and they can uh, uh, chop off tissues and, and mix, I don't know, different cell, different type of cells. And, and uh, uh, first you see that they, they make uh, very uh, spherical sh uh, shaped drops. It shows there is an interfacial tension. And now they sort, they can sort out so two different tissues I don't remember exactly which is which. And, uh, uh, and again, these, they can measure and show that interfacial, they separate out according to interfacial tension and they can, can measure the interfacial tension. So we know these numbers. And we know, uh, basically, we can, re, uh, we can uh, also know the viscosity, if you want, of these uh, uh, tissues. Uh, now, for some... Uh, Okay, let's just me show, let, let, let me show you a video uh, done at the Cure Institute uh, uh, by Karen Kevorkian and, and, and Francois Borchard's group. So they pull on a, uh, an aggregate of uh, cancer cells, so these are neurine sarcoma uh, uh, cells. And they, in fact, they increase the, the sucking pressure by, uh, I remember, uh, 1,000 pascal. 
So it's five time, and it's over a five hour uh, span. And you see it really close, and you also see the, the fact that uh, uh, there is a tension there. What is the size of this tube? Uh, good question. It's a capillary. Uh, okay, you know the size of the cells. Cells about 20 to 30 microns. And you see that the one, two, three, six hundred micron diameter. Okay, this is another uh, uh, video. So it's on a longer time scale. So you see that you have a cell, two beginning cells here. So maybe it's a few days. And uh, uh, you see, the, again, they make droplets and droplets fuse. So it's like dew. I mean, if you, if you look at uh, a growing dew, at the, you see almost the same thing. But it's, it's just, the, just the scales are totally different. Now, uh, it turns out in some of our cases, uh, the fluid don't flow, and there are beautiful experiments on uh, uh, epithelia uh, done in Santa Barbara, uh, which show that for some of the uh, epithelia, uh, the cells don't move with respect to each other, aside from duplication and apoptosis events. They can, they can pull that very nicely over a long uh, time scale. And uh, uh, so my point is that even if you are in that case, so if, if, if between duplication in apoptosis events, the cells don't move with respect to each other, so it, it's essentially an elastic medium at short time scale. Even in that case, it's at a long time scale, it's case larger than uh, duplication and, and apoptosis rate, it will still behave like a fluid. And the argument is very simple. So I didn't put any uh, 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 cancer in this, but you could do it. Uh, you know, if you are in a, an elastic medium, you can uh, write something very similar to what you write uh, in electrostatics. That is, the stress can be written in terms of the uh, uh, displacement field and a polarization, so an elastic polarization field, which is uh, uh, due to the uh, uh, sources, of the local sources of the formation that are outside the uh, uh, description range of the uh, uh, elastic field here. And typically, that's what happens if you have a, a duplicating a cell or a dime cell, so locally a duplicating cell will give you a, a local stress which is something different from the, the uh, rest of the tissue. And uh, uh, the difference now with electrostatics is that uh, uh, what can be easily connected to what you know is that is to the uh, rate of dupli the duplication rate or the apoptosis rate is the uh, time derivative of this uh, uh, polarization field, and it's elastic polarization field. So now, if with that and this relation, you, the uh, constitutive relation uh, 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 links the derivative of the stress tensor to this duplication rate here. And, and but these rates depend on tension. So if you're close to steady state, so and this is the the real uh, 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 equation to be used, real constitutive equation. But now if you're close to steady state, you can linearize this equation. And if you linearize this equation, you wind, you wind up right away with the Maxwell expression of a gel, which tells you that at short time scale, it's, it's, of indeed, uh, it's an elastic medium, and at long time scale, it's a, it's a fluid. So even in that case, long time is a fluid. So then uh, we are back to the physics of fluid in a sense. And you can write the now with one very important difference. And this important difference is that the, the uh, density, so cell density is not conserved. And there is a source term with the uh, duplication and apoptosis. And that's basically it. So uh, we can come back to the piston case, but that's not so important. Uh, let me skip that. And let me show you some uh, simulations. So you can uh, uh, mimic cells by giving you some rules, like the, let's say the usual rules that people use for fluids, and but you add you add up the probability of a cell to disappear, so uh, a molecule let's say to disappear, and the another probability of that molecule to appear or to duplicate. And uh, uh, if you do that, you wind up uh, uh, let's say.
first start with the uh, uh, simulation of uh, uh, Fermi and aggregate experiment. Okay, so uh, I hope we we'll can see, I can show you the videos. But anyway, so uh, you, you can, uh, uh, with these equations at hand, you can raise the question, what happens if I put a, a one a, a cell here which duplicates faster than the surrounding tissue? And, uh, uh, and if you don't do it, I mean, if you just raise the question the way I did, and uh, so you just balance the stresses at the interface, and you just have difference in between rates and apoptosis rate. Uh, you find exactly the same thing as in the Gedanken experiment, is that this tissue, which has the highest uh, uh, steady state pressure, will always wipe out the other. And uh, uh, it's just, just don't get to that. Now, I showed you that uh, uh, it's known that tissues have interfacial tensions. And so, upon uh, 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 discussing the problem, just balancing stresses, we, we ignore surface tension. So what happens if we introduce that surface tension? And you see now that the pressure in the uh, tissue which is inside the aggregate is the pressure outside to which you add to add a Laplace pressure. And now if the now you can have a tissue, let's say normal tissue, which has a lower steady state pressure than the growing tissue, but because of uh, the Laplace pressure, the pressure inside the growing tissue is larger than the steady state pressure of the growing tissue. So even though this tissue would grow if there was no tension, now the the tension inside is larger, and so the tissue will shrink, as a matter of fact. And it's only beyond some critical value, and that critical value is 
simply defined by the fact that the difference in pressure is just the uh, steady state pressure difference of the two tissues, and that defines for a given tension a uh, critical radius. And above that critical radius, if tension is constant, above that critical radius, then the tissue will grow, and below that critical radius, the tissue will shrink. So you do find this, uh, 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 this idea of a critical radius, uh, not because it's a first order transition, but just because of the rules of the uh, uh, mechanical rules of the growing tissues. Now, uh, you know, these tensions need not be really constant. It could be, uh, uh, in some cases, it could be that the, uh, the, the tension grows with the radius of the aggregate. And if it grows faster than the radius itself, now what I describe as a uh, unstable steady state uh, could become stable. And we explained and we discussed that with the, uh, uh, Xavier Sass, so the, the doctor. And, and so our idea that in those cases, uh, the, the tumor might be benign. I mean, they would, they would stay at some stable uh, uh, state at which the, uh, the, 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 the tension would adjust spontaneously. And, uh, and this, uh, then he said, oh, wow, now I understand why the doctors, when they cut open the tumor, if, it, if the tumor pops open, they, they say it's, it's, it's a benign tumor. They, of course, they send it to, to a histological analysis, but they right away know that it's a, it's a benign tumor, and that might be the reason why. I mean, these benign tumors are, are under uh, uh, pressure. Uh, if instead, when they cut it, it doesn't pop at all, then uh, uh, they, they, they know it's more serious. Now, uh, okay. So, and if, so the, if the problem was just um, mean field problem, the way I've been describing it, we would never have a tumor. Because it's, it's known that uh, uh, cancer, this microscopic tumor, a monoclonal, so we know it starts from one cell. And this one cell might very well always be smaller than the critical uh, 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 radius you have to achieve. So it means that one has to deal with the uh, uh, statistics of uh, duplication and apoptosis. And because it's monoclonal, the statistic is actually simple. So you can write a master equation. So I mean, there is a probability for a tumor uh, of size, uh, uh, of a given size, to, uh, uh, to get one more uh, uh, cell. I mean, the so it's connected to duplication rate, or it could lose a cell by apoptosis, and, and all that is, uh, is fairly easy to write. And uh, you just have to take some care in writing the pressure dependence. And the pressure dependence boils down to the one over n, so number of uh, uh, cells to the one third dependence. It's just relating to the, uh, the radius to the total number of cells. So it's a simple, uh, very simple uh, way of writing the thing. And uh, just open your, your favorite uh, statistical physics book. Uh, I mean, what you want to know is the probability to exceed this critical uh, radius. So uh, uh, it's, it's, it's called splitting probability. Take Ben Campen book if you like it. And you get the result. And you can also do simulations. And uh, here is a typical curve. So uh, we know we know interfacial tensions. We know the average division and apoptosis rate. We don't really, we don't know the uh, uh, steady state pressures, so there we have to make guesses, uh, and uh, we don't know how this uh, uh, the, the pressure def dependence of the rates, and there also we have to make guesses. But uh, so we do make guesses, and uh, uh, here is a typical curve that we get. So one, uh, say the uh, continuous curve and the analytical curve of points or simulations. And uh, uh, so you, in that, with the number that we chose in that case, uh, uh, you find, and actually we adjusted it in such a way that they look like uh, what is known uh, from the uh, experiments I've been showing you at the beginning. And uh, uh, so in that case, you can see that for a critical size of uh, uh, 10 uh, cells, you get a uh, one out of uh, 1,000 uh, probability of success, and uh, which is uh, which is observed. So, 
but also what you find is that's what's more interesting is that if you change the interfacial ten tension just by a factor of two, you change the probability by uh, uh, you know five orders of magnitude, and that also we know of course. I mean it's not a surprise to a physicist, but uh, 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 it may be a surprise to a doctor, and uh, uh, so I th think it's very important. And it has, in fact, it uh, uh, it may explain something which has been known for a long time. Uh, which is that uh, uh, some metastases are known to succeed in some tissues, but not in other tissues. Okay, so we are, okay, I'll jump. And, and uh, uh, it, it may also explain the, uh, of course, uh, why the uh, uh, tumors arise at the interface. This is more general than the, uh, just the, uh, um, uh, uterus cancer. I mean, uh, tumors very often arise at the uh, interfaces. And uh, of course, uh, just by the very naive argument of that time, you see that the critical number, if you have an interface, rigid interface, then it's essentially divided by two. And if you just look at this curve and you start from a critical number of 10 divided by two, the two five, and you find the probability is, uh, is 10 times larger. I should say only 10 times larger because in, in, in nucleation evidence, it's, much, it's very often much, much uh, larger, I think. So it's maybe, a, a, actually, it's maybe an artifact of the number who been truly. But even 10 is important because it, it makes a difference between 10 years and 100 years. Uh, okay, so let me just add, so <coughs> maybe uh, uh, if the tumors are successful, they grow to millimeter size, and at this millimeter size, uh, they reach a steady state. And the steady state is such that in this region here, outside, the cells divide, and they, uh, they divide because they get the growth factors from the healthy tissue. And uh, in this region here, they just move toward the center, but they don't do much. And they die in the, in the center. And this steady state may also last for years and years. And it's only when you get the next instability and that uh, angiogenesis takes place so that uh, so, uh, uh, blood vessels uh, invade uh, the, uh, this tumor that then it, it gets really bad. So we, we do get, so we can get the steady state where we, uh, we didn't uh, work out the uh, instability uh, in the angiogenesis case uh, yet. But let me just jump on that because I'm late. Uh, let me just... That's one very easy way to uh, discuss this uh, uh, steady state of why, uh, assuming that the, uh, um, the duplication rate and apophysis rate are directly controlled by gross, the gross factor and the oxygen content. In fact, the, the, uh, uh, the core where the cell die uh, 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 is defined by a lack of oxygen. It's called hypoxia, it's well documented. So if you just do that, you find that uh, uh, the size of this uh, tumor is about three times the length scale over which oxygen uh, yeah, can penetrate. So, okay, now the most important is that if, if all of that is true, we must be able to do experiments. And we are starting to do experiments, and uh, what we do is just take uh, cell aggregates, cancer cell aggregates, we squeeze them there, and we look at the diameter as a function of the pressure on which, uh, 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 which we apply on the plates, on the uh, um, side walls here. And, uh, uh, but they, these walls are permeable to both nutrients and growth factors, as in the Gedanken experiment. But here we have to be more careful because the, uh, 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 the length scale I just introduced before clear roll. Here, this is yeah, as you, the millimeter size, and so there is a length scale over which the nutrient penetrate, and, uh, and in the middle of this cell do die, so there is a hypoxia in the middle, so, uh, uh, so we, we have to take account of all that, which we are doing now. And these are preliminary results, and I just want to show that uh, uh, very quickly, that uh, uh, if you don't put any pressure, and you start from any value of any number of cells there, it goes to some kind of steady state here, which uh, uh, depends on the nutrient and so on. 
But now you exert you know, tiny pressure, three pascal, and it's already losing uh, something like uh, 100 uh, uh, micron in diameter. 30 pascal loses 200 micron in diameter. 300 or 400 pascal, now it loses 400 microns. And now if you, for instance, in that case, for the 30 pascal, you wash out and you put the nutrient back and it goes to the, uh, to the steady state without pressure. I'm sorry, uh, you, you uh, uh, turn the pressure off and it goes to the steady state uh, without pressure. So it's really a steady state. And, and now if you exceed, so uh, here is 16 uh, kilopascal, and you see it grows back to the original size, but then if you exceed slightly this value, it all collapses. So you do, just by you know, playing on pressure, you can suppress uh, a tumor. Now, now, so now we are disentangling, uh, disentangling the experiments because you have, you have to uh, calculate the shape and so on. And, uh, but, but, uh, uh, we, we do see that this notion of uh, pressure is there. We can start to put numbers, and, uh, and it's fun to see. I mean, if you squeeze the liquid drop, it gets wider. Here you squeeze the liquid drop, I mean, the cell aggregate, it shrinks. Okay, thank you for your attention. Because you have a okay. If you look at the benign tumors, it's, uh, there is a strong there is a strong uh, uh, layer of uh, tissue or so not really tissue, a strong layer separating the uh, uh, normal tissue from the uh, tumor. And so it's a very I mean it's it's it's, it's a uh, it looks like a solid surface which separates the, the, the two tissues. And which can, which is able to uh, exert a, a strong pressure, strong black gas pressure. So it's not just like a balloon. It looks more like a balloon, so then, then like uh, an interfacial tension of two fluids. Because the tumor is monoclonal, kind of ignoring the heterogeneity, but I mean, I think the, the reason sort of cancer thing, like the, this heterogeneity in cancer, uh, it, like sort of isogenic heterogeneity in cancer, has been sort of brought to life, and people say it's one of the most, uh, yeah. most significant effect of the, the, the success of metastasis is actually how heterogeneous are the cells within it. Uh, do you think it fits in your model? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, eventually, of course, uh, uh, tumor to be successful, to become large, you need about six different mutations. But what we are speaking of here is just the very early stages when it's small, when it's a microscopic tumor, and there is known to be monoclonal. But it, this is the only the only early stage. I mean, this is the early stage. But but link, for instance, to, to get to the angiogenesis uh, uh, stage, you probably need some more uh, uh, mutation and so on. So there there are other mutations. That's true. But at this early stage, not. Question. 
or maybe they're not fundamental. So I was, so I was wondering uh, how sensitive are your results for the nucleation uh, of these tumors to the details of your the interaction between cells? And the reason I ask is because, uh, for example, with Morris's tissues, you know that the system is um, basically solid-like except for the pr proliferation, which allows the tissue to be liquid-like. But there are other types of tissues which are sort of liquid-like even in the absence of proliferation. So in other words, That's how sensitive... That's what they said, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yes, so, yes. so in other words, how sensitive is the details of this nucleation process to the details of your model for how the cells interact with they are very sensitive, and that's a point. <clears throat> I mean, usually you don't like your result to be sensitive to, uh, you know, you like the result to be robust, but it's no. Uh, and it's no, it is not surprise to physicists. I mean, nucleation processes, in that case, it, in, uh, it has nothing to do with the first order transition, right? It's really uh, connected to the fact that it's a system with, it's a non conserved system. But but uh, but it's known we, we know that that uh, a nucleation depends on on tiny details, and that what makes in fact that what makes the problem difficult, because uh, uh, this nucleation barrier here can be uh, 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 biased by anything. So all this uh, say uh, uh, you have a chemical for instance, uh, some chemical pollutant. <coughs> And it changes the barrier a little bit. And then this changes the outcome tremendously. So, and, and, and then all of that is there. So how are you so, sure you have the right cell-cell interaction model? You know, how are you sure that that's what you have is the physical sort of mechanical interaction? Or you mean in simulations? Yeah. Very naively for the time being, very naively. We just adjust the numbers in such a way that it looks like the experiments, <laughs> right? I mean, it's. The important thing is not so much, the simulation tells us that uh, it, it looks like the calculation and that's all, and, and, and there's some, uh, uh, it, it allows also to discuss some uh, uh, fluctuations, but, it, but it's terribly naive right now, but we can't do any better. But I think the important, the, the, the important message is that uh, first, uh, uh, it depends on all details which is something we don't like, I mean, uh, usually I don't like that too much, but this is life, we can't escape that. And, and there is a, a things to learn from that. And second, maybe it gives an idea on, on the, and, and it may take a long time to diffuse in the doctor community, but the uh, uh, one way to, uh, uh, to fight uh, cancer would not be to kill, I mean, what, what do people do now? They, they just try to kill the cancer cell faster than they kill the normal cell, right? So you play, you play on the apoptosis rate. But uh, uh, it would be much nicer to be able to uh, crank up the uh, uh, steady state pressure on normal tissue, and things would happen just by themselves, or crank up interfacial tension. So there are ways, I mean, and, and, and it may take a long time because we have to learn, and, and, and this is, you know, just the, the, the real problem has many other uh, dimensions. But uh, uh, I think we cannot avoid uh, uh, addressing the uh, mechanical part of the question. And, and, uh, and this is just a way of, of starting to, to address this question. Are there two separate issues? One is phase segregation, and then one is nucleation. I mean, is it necessary that the two components separate segregate? Because you have cases where the cancer grows without there being this two-phase behavior. So it's you're right. I mean, it, well, it seems that uh, at least for these small uh, uh, microtumors, they do phase separate, but they but of course, those which don't are more dangerous. But so, so I mean, it's they probably exist, and and these are the more the most dangerous. So suppose that some are able. Since we have mutations, let's say, first mutation, it divides faster, okay. But there is a tension. So 
this difficulty, this nucleation problem. Second mutation, successful mutation, you, de you, you decrease the, te the tension and you set it to zero or even negative values, then it's a lot more dangerous. So, so all these questions are there, all these questions. Wetting angles, all of that. I mean, uh, I mean this is just a you know, very little start, but, uh, but all these physics are there, and, and, and connected to mutation. Uh, is it known experimentally that the steady state pressure of healthy tissue is smaller than that of the uh, tumor tissue? I mean, this is the basis. Nobody ever measured it. We just are starting to measure it. To my, I mean, people, so the most that people have done is put uh, uh, cells in gels and get to a steady state shape of the uh, aggregate in the gel, and from the gel deformation they can infer the mechanical stress that the, this tumor has been exerting on the surrounding. But this is a regime, uh, in fact, where you have a, a duplicating cells at the outside and, and dying cells on the inside. So it's not a measure of the state state pressure. So, uh, but, but uh, the, I mean, we do get some orders of magnitude for this kind of experiments, but this is not enough to uh, extract the state state pressure. So we don't know. So if it turned out that there's a contrary, we are stupid, okay? But we'll see. <laughs> That's what theory should do. Do, um, do tumors ever buckle because of the necrotic cells on the inside? And if they were to, would that affect like, their growth or whether they... Tissue buckle. Tissue do buckle and, and, and uh, 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 invading tumor. Uh, uh, I mean, we, we are doing some calculations. Uh, where uh, it's obvious that it's just in the bucking instability. I mean, for the physics, when the physics looks at, I mean, when Xavier was showing us pictures, and we just said, wow, well, I mean, this is bucking. I, yeah. So we should probably thank the speaker again at this point. And